At 10 minutes. We are fine, no? We are fine. Yeah. So we have 20 minutes now, eh? I did the modification and then again it was been said that I need to do redo my the some of the tasks. So I did it uh, one month before, so I'm waiting for the decision right now. So at least uh, even after remodification, he had to wait further modification. Yes. Now once so it's 11 months. Because I am here now, sometimes it is bureaucratic problem because without my vetting, because each and every publication must go through me, the final decision. So once I check that his paper is accepted, because his paper will be accepted now, but there may be needed further modification. Because once acceptance last law issued based on minor or mid mid or substantial modification, it will go through. Once it is accepted, if it is accepted by end of November, then he must wait to publish this paper, and that will be published in July 2018. So you can see the timing. So December last year, 11 months and another seven months, how many? But he will feel pleasure because it is fully endorsed, isn't it? So you can say some cases it can take two years to publish. So I think it's a good feeling. What is the open access journal? Uh, I know some uh, open access journal, which are very good open access journal, uh, published by Springer. One is published by Taylor Francis, which is called Cogent Business and Management. Springer, uh, one journal I know, which is called Crime Science. They do have only one ISSN number. Mm -hmm. They don't have any print ISSN. That's right, is, yeah. is, is it a problem no. in, in no. my university? I got, I got your question. You see, before, uh, 1970s or late 70s, all the, all the publications were based on subscription. The JBLMR we have started 2006 as subscription based. What does it mean? That you submit papers, uh, we'll accept the papers, we'll publish it, but it will not go online and that will not have access to any individual. So that will be based on subscription means that certain bodies like Scopus, they will subscribe to our journals. They will pay loyalty to us. Now we are getting part of the open access a good loyalty every year from Scopus, from EBSCO, from ProQuest. So every year they are calculating how many people click on their online. Because most of the universities, they are paying huge amount of money. For example, I give you that where I was teaching, Hartford University, they pay 125,000 pounds. So you are talking about more than one crore every year to have the subscription for about 3,000 journals. You understand? So worldwide. So subscription-based means it will not have access to the public. So if public would like to get the access, they have to go through the university subscription, they'll have the login, the university must pay, or they must pay for uh, each article. Each article, we used to sell each article 20. Uh, I'm coming. So these are the first things, what is open access and what is the things. Now, due to the open access since 1980s, we have seen a surge of publications mushroom type of publication, because you are just publishing online. You get the ISN number only for online, because if the publication is online and print, you must get two ISS number. One is for print, one is for... So, and based on this, we have to publish printed version and submit to for depositories to the ISSN provider. So many people, they don't want to publish, uh, you see, do it online, you see, uh, printed, because online is easy. You submit, we'll accept, put online. Simple, we're not liable. But because of online and easy way, there's many softwares, you don't do anything. Put it and put online, it's become easy. And or because online, we are charging to the authors. Subscription based, we don't charge to the authors. It's a free, okay? And that time, <coughs> one, two authors from University of Chittagong, they published our journals. So you don't have any access, we don't charge anything to the author, it's free of charge. But now we are charging because there's a cost involved. So we are char charged goes to the uh, authors. So this is the open access. And authors want their publications available to millions of readers, isn't it? Find out that open access journal, how it is listed by Scopus, El Sheba, and so on. Yes. Nothing else. But because of open access, there is a thousands of fake journals. And people don't understand. Now think about it. You are putting, oh, nice title, interesting journal of business and management. You don't know what does it mean. It can be fake. They're just getting your money, isn't it? And you put it and you are dancing on the floor that my paper has been accepted. But then you found that. And many people are saying, Professor, I would like to publish the same paper on your journal because my university is saying that I'm going to give you, I'll not give you the promotion because you publish in fake journal. I didn't know that. But who is going to know? You must know it, isn't it? No one is going to tell you that you must know.
you find out nowadays you can do the research. Perception become very bad now towards open access, frankly speaking. Uh, because there is a, over 100,000 journals are either predatory. Even one point, Academy was listed by bill list. Do you know that bill list? I'm sharing, you know that. I'm sharing with you if you know the bill list, because he's only one individual, and now later on we found that he got many lawsuits. Even when I actually discovered, we actually supported Bill, that the initiative we have taken to dig out the bad journals is a good initiative. But later on we found that he's a complete maniac. He's just mentally bad professor. Because he was a curator for the uh, University of Colorado, the head curator for the University of Colorado. And his intention was, I'll not allow any open access journals. Doesn't matter good or bad. His intention, I'll not allow any publication from Asia, from China, from India, and from Africa. All research will be dominated by US and Europe. So he's a maniac. So when I wrote to him, a big email, no response. Then I wrote to the Colorado University. Then they gave me the number for the you see, chancellor and the human resources. Then I wrote to him again with the 10 points that no problem. If you actually say that we are not good journals, because he's saying probable predatory, means it doesn't mean that it's bad. Probably, it may be. So you make sure that you look at it, okay, carefully. So I said, when you are listing someone, if I say Professor Rohim is a bad professor, I must have some justification. Either I must inquire with the university, either I must get the feedback from the students, either I must get feedback from other colleagues, or either I must have communication with the Professor Rohim. Then only I can claim he may be, or probably he's a bad professor, isn't it? In US, you have the read the professor, you know that. So any students can read the professors. So you can see here. So once we send this uh, 10 recommendation, he said, don't, don't force me to remove your journal. This is the word one line. Without salutation, so you can see what a racist individual can be. So, and there's many articles against him, lawsuit and so on, Even big, big, largest organization, open access, which has over millions of pound turnover. And they're good, they're good. So then when we wrote actually University of Colorado, I vividly remember that we send this, we send all the you see, communication to University of Colorado. In January 15th or 12th, we got the message, he's no longer, and his list is removed from the website. And Colorado University removed his profile from the university and the library. However, when the list is online, no one can remove everything, isn't it? You will find out somewhere there. So this is, so people has the negative connotation with the open access, this is the answer. Actually last, uh, last year I got a uh, research grant from John Hopkins University, uh, Institute of Global Trouble Control, and there, uh, now it is the time to submit my manuscript. So what is the problem? Actually, I, in the meantime, I, uh, I could publish two journal publication from the Scopus Index, but now the time, if ISI or Thomson Reuters, if I just intend, so what is the problem now I'm facing? Uh, like, suppose American Journal of Public Health, uh, they just record or whatever the article we just found there, they are, actually most of the article, there is the very critical analysis, mm -hmm. but like adjusted, adjusted odds ratio or that type of analysis. But I need, that is that type of analysis, but in my surroundings, no one is there I found who can do this type of analysis. So actually what to do? I can organize how to, that is manage manuscript and organize this thing. Actually I am oriented, but now I'm not that much capable to. I, I, got, I got a actually, question, I understand so what you're what trying to, to say. Do. And another thing, sir, uh, some people I saw that is in a same project, okay, though it is not possible, actually not looking good to make four or five article in the same project, but he's doing that. Top channels, they actually accept the competitive papers. We accept both competitive and uh, theoretical based pa theoretical papers. We accept conceptual papers. We accept case studies. And also, these four categories of papers we accept. Because journals will not accept de development papers. So if you see that, and also technical papers. We do not accept technical papers at this stage. So journals like public health, or engineering, science, robotics, aeronautics. These, most of the journals focus on, rather than competitive, they focus on technical papers. 
because technical papers has requires more technical analysis, okay, and not the theoretical analysis side. So you have to find out that the journals which actually looking technical papers, you are, you are talking about the public health, isn't it? So you have to find out that public health journals which focus on not competitive or maybe both competitive and technical. So you will be submitting the based on the technical side of the paper. So I'm sure it, if it is uh, healthcare, we see healthcare industry or public health, you will have the technical, uh, in technical side, a critical analysis you can submit that way. So you have to look at, so I'll not be able to give you which specific journal. So only you have to look at how the competitive paper they accept or the technical paper that accept. It is competitive technical analysis. Now if you don't know how to do the technical analysis or there is expertise less in, the, in Bangladesh, try to find out which university they have and then you have to find out the channel where you can collaborate. So you can do the technical part and that part can do the analytical part, okay, critical part. And the combination you can actually contribute something. This is the most the people are doing nowadays. Collaboration, collaboration, you see. Less ranking journals, you can make it maximum up to four to five project. One will be the development papers. Development papers with the conceptual background. Because if you are doing a conceptual framework based on Bangladesh, the, this framework is the new to the authors. So means it has the originality, okay? So paper project can be based on theoretical, so we'll first do the theoretical side without empirical analysis, without statistical analysis. If it is quantitative, you can easily make five papers, maximum five. One is the theoretical, so you will theoretical side you will explain up to the conceptual. One is the purely critical literature review in this area, if the area is the public health and autism, whatever it is. So then you can actually look at the situation of autism in Bangladesh and get the critical review. So review will become as a review paper, okay? So that can be published. Many journals accept review papers, including us, but we are not in this field. So you have the theoretical papers, you have the review papers, then third papers will be conceptual papers. The purely based on, if it is an empirical study, bear in mind. Because if it is not an empirical study, we will not see the conceptual framework there, mainly. So you can do the another paper, conceptual framework, then Fourth paper will be analytical papers. So based on the analysis, discussions, and conclusions. So analysis based, you can do the two papers separately if you have the two or three different objectives. So my analysis paper will be based on one objective or two objectives, and another paper can be third objectives. You understand? Like I would like to see the degree of customers' loyalty within the super, super stores industry in Bangladesh, I can have one paper, but when I carry out the research, I can have, sometimes, the relationship between retention and customer loyalty to examine, you see? So I can have this one that is based on conceptual and that is based on same statistical analysis, but I'm going to look at loyalty side of the customers. So you can make up to five, easily. If, uh, if if I scan any article for plagiarism checking, there is a, uh, there's something called a, a similar index. So what is the strategy? Is there any acceptance, level of acceptance? If the similarity within the uh, section of literature review, yes. we, we treat them differently. If similarity is uh, within the discussion and conclusion, under discussion conclusion, we don't want to see more than 5%, because that, that is the particular piece of work that is your own writing. So. Within the literature review, we are accept up to 12%. Within the literature but, review? Yeah, but not, you see, at the moment, you not are not getting similarity report. But from January, everybody will get the similarity report. We'll print out, we'll send it to the author. So then they'll know what is the similarity so that they can sit down, correct it accordingly. That means it's, it, it can vary uh, uh, based on the sections included in oh, the article. Oh, yes. Because I don't want to see, you see, our, our policy that we would like to see zero percent similarity in discussion and conclusion. Because conclusion is the main part of the whole publication where I know what is the contribution you are making. So I think they are the only authority, uh, you see, developed a proper structure of abstract. Now we are saying that why not you follow gel structure and develop your abstract. At the moment, abstract. we don't have any structure as long as abstract includes the purpose of the, uh, you see that uh, publications, methodology you have employed, the brief findings, originality statement within this, and the brief contribution. So five or six elements, I would like to see those. Some people giving the background one page, but those information are not putting. So means we are not reading the whole article. We don't have that time. Eh? Before just coming to this session, I got an email from a, a BDC ranked journal uh, with a rejection after double uh, blind review.
any view then i thought that this session is going to be very important for me so please uh, if you uh, provide me suggestion for the very beginners like me how to um, start uh, research uh, attempts and how to uh, make myself ready for get published in the uh, rank journal ask now look at the comments they send you the comments am i right yes so look at the comments and each comments try to address adequately then revise your paper then send it to abdc again then they are going to the second review let's see what they do if they don't have you see accept then submit to other scopas or elsewhere listed journal is a more rejection is better for you because you'll get many comments then you can actually revise it